All right, how we doing? All right, we're back here looking at section 2.3, evaluating expressions. Today we're just going to be doing what is called evaluating expressions. We've worked with simplifying expressions so far, and today we're going to go a step farther and see what happens when we try to evaluate. So what that word evaluate means, <clears throat> excuse me, is to determine a single value that is equivalent that word equivalent is really fancy and it really just means equal um, to the expression when we're given so when given values for the variables might want to pause that and rewrite that uh, so you can get that down but really what we have is we're just going to be basically simplifying something to its you know to its smallest possible value and what that means is that we're going to have things like uh, you know like x plus 5 or, or something like that but they're also going to tell us what x is so how we evaluate is to replace the variable so replace the variable with specific numbers or let's just say with given numbers and follow the proper order of operations. All right, let's look at what that's going to look like when we when we actually try it. Um, you know, it says your turn there, but we haven't really done any. So in, in all of these problems below, we're going to let x equal 5 and y equal 2. Sorry, y equal negative 2. So let's see what, what we mean by that. All I want to do is I want to put 5 in for x and negative 2 in for y. That's what I'm going to be doing, and that's really as simple as this can be. So I have 2 times, that's 2 times x, but we know what x is. x is 5 plus 4 times y, but we know what y is. It's negative 2. So here we have 2 times 5 is 10. Uh, 4 times negative 2 is a negative 8. We can just write that as minus 8. And then we go 10 minus 8, follow order of operations. It was pretty easy here. We had multiplication, and now we're doing subtraction. And 10 minus 8 is 2. So we're getting a single value out of something that looked somewhat complicated. Uh, and, but really, this stuff is kind of nice. I don't really like variables. I want to get rid of them whenever I can. Here I have 6 times x times y. So 6 times 5 times negative 2. I'm just going to go from left to right. 6 times 5 is 30 times negative 2 is negative 60. All right, next one. We have uh, 2 times x divided by y. 2 times x means 2 times 5 and y is negative 2. A lot of times when I'm evaluating, I do put parentheses around those numbers just to clue myself into the fact that that is a number that I put in there, not the problem put in there. Okay, 2 times 5 is 10 divided by negative 2. 10 divided by negative 2 is negative 5. Pretty quick and easy problems. Next one, we have x squared minus y squared. That just means 5 squared minus negative 2 squared. Now if you're going to do this on a calculator, if you don't know what negative 2 squared is, make sure you use those parentheses around the negative 2, otherwise you'll get the wrong answer. 
5 times 5 is 25 minus 2 times 2 is even though it's a negative 2 negative times negative is positive so 25 minus 4 that's going to equal 21 blackjack all right last two um, let's look at what we have here they're a little bit more complicated there's more steps involved but it's not that big of a deal we're just going to work our way through one step at a time following proper order of operations uh, 10x plus 2x I'm going to go ahead and combine like terms there first it'll take one step out of the out of the work later 10 plus 2 is 12 over negative 3y 12 times x that means 12 times 5 over negative 3 times negative 2 okay 12 times 5 is 60 negative 3 times negative 2 is a positive 6 60 divided by 6 is 10 that was pretty easy I like that all right let's go on to the next one uh, if you want to pause this and give it a shot you sure can why don't we go ahead and do that pause that and see what you get all right welcome back with this problem there's so many different things going on here I could combine like terms but I'm actually afraid that I'll mess that up okay even you know great math people like me uh, screw things up really on a constant basis uh, but here I just have 16 plus x plus y and that's just 5 plus negative 2 <coughs> plus we have 5xy that just means 5 times negative 2 well either way should be 5 times 5 times negative 2 but you can switch those up if you mess up see mistakes they're everywhere minus 4 plus 6 times y is negative 2 okay Let's use our order of operations and do this the right way. I'm going to work inside the parentheses first. So 16 plus 5 plus negative 2, that's just going to be 3. I'm going to rewrite this. i write it the correct way. Not that it was a big deal. It meant the same thing. Uh, but technically those parentheses aren't parentheses that involve work. So I don't want to work with those yet. And then... I'm going to kind of do this stuff in one step. 16 times negative 2 is negative 12. And 4 minus 12 is going to give me a negative 8. Okay. Now we have multiplication right here, so I'll get that stuff going. 16 plus 3 plus 5 times 5 is 25. 5 times 5 is 25 times negative 2 is negative 50 and then we just have our minus negative 8 over here okay so let's do addition from left to right and take it one step at a time just make sure we get things right here uh, 16 plus 3 is 19 plus a negative 50 I'm going to simplify this minus negative 8 into just being plus 8 Okay, uh, so we have 19 minus 50. Just going to double check my work here. That'll be a negative 31 plus 8, and that's going to equal a negative 23. All right, so kind of a long problem, a lot of steps there. It would have been easier if we would have combined like terms first, but there are so many different things going on there, I didn't want to mess up. All right, go ahead and turn the page. Yep. And let me zoom this out so we can actually see stuff. Come on. There we go. All right. Now, focus. Your focus needs more focus. That was probably a little too far. All right, so now we're kind of faced with a tough question. Do I distribute or do I not distribute? Okay, when I'm asking myself that question, you know, when we distribute and we have like an example, say we have 
we're going to go easy and just let x equal 1 and y equal 2. Okay, pretty easy scenario. And let's say I have the problem uh, 2 times the quantity x plus y. Let's start off and just not distribute. Okay, let's see what happens if I do that. So I'm not going to distribute this problem. I'm just going to evaluate. Put 1 in for x, 2 in for y, and let's roll. Okay, I have 1 plus 2 in there. That's going to be 2 times 1 plus 2 is 3, and 2 times 3 is 6. Okay, let's also do that problem the other way where we distribute. Let's go 2x plus y. If I distribute that 2, I'm going to have 2x plus 2y. All right, now I want to evaluate and replace those variables. 2 times 1 plus 2 times 2. 2 times 1 we know is 2. 2 times 2 is 4. 2 plus 4 is 6. So I get the same answer. I don't really know which way is easier. Um, I, I can tell you that not distributing is less steps, but sometimes it can be a little bit difficult. So you kind of have to just make up your mind on what to do. We're going to practice going both ways and just see what happens. All right. So on the left-hand side, we're going to not distribute. And on the right-hand side, we're going to distribute. Okay. In fact, they're just the same problems, but the, distrib the distributing step has already been done for us. Okay. So every problem on the left equals the problem on the right. Their answers should equal. So for these ones, um, we're going to use the, let's see, we're going to use the values negative 3 and positive 5 for our x and y values. So let's let x be negative 3 and y be positive 5. It doesn't say that on these problems, but we're just going to try that out. It shouldn't matter what numbers you use your answer should come up the same in these pairs of problems here. So again, left-hand side, we're not going to distribute. We're just going to go 5, and I have negative 3 for x and 5 for y. Okay, negative 3 plus 5 is positive 2. 5 times 2 is 10. Here we're going to do the same thing, but we're just not or we've already distributed. We don't have to even worry about that. But we should come up with the same answer. Five times negative three is negative fifteen, plus five times five is twenty-five. Negative fifteen plus twenty-five is ten. All right. Here we have an x on the outside, not a big deal. I know what x is, so I just replace that. Negative 3 and y is 5. We have that plus 3 over there. So I have negative 3 and 8. Negative 3 times 8 is negative 24. And here I have, I have it already distributed. x times y is negative 3 times 5 plus 3 times 5. Okay. Or sorry, 3 times, that's not a 5, that's a negative 3. All right, so negative 3 times 5 is a negative 15, um, and then a negative 3 times 3 is a negative 9. So negative 15 minus 9, since I'm subtracting from a negative, it's going to go farther left. It's going to be negative 24. Notice I'm getting the same answers on the left and right. Go ahead and pause the video. Try the next two. Go. All right, welcome back. These problems are a little bit tougher, but I get negative 3, negative 3, 5, and then negative 3 plus 5.
Negative 3 times negative 3 is 9 times 5 is 45. Negative 3 plus 5 is 2. And we end up with 90. A little bit more work on that problem, but still, it's doable. Negative 3 times negative 3 squared times 5 minus 3 times negative 3 times, yeah, times 5 squared. All right, negative 3, or let's do the, the proper order of operations. Let's do the exponents first. Negative 3 times negative 3 is positive 9. Uh, 9 times 3 is 27. And when we, when we go 27 times 5, it's going to be negative 135. Okay, here we have a negative 3 times negative 3, that's 9, and 5 squared is 25. 9 times 25 is going to be a plus 225. Number's getting a little bit bigger, but nothing to really worry about. When I simplify this part, we get 90. Okay, so the same thing on the left and the right. Good job. Let's go ahead and move on to the last four problems, and we'll get out of here. These are what the, the problems are going to look like when you're working on your, on your homework, on your practice problems, um, and, and your application problems. Usually I like to mix up the, the values of the variables as we go. We, I don't like getting too caught up. I'm just always going to think that x equals negative 3 and that y equals 5 for a little bit. But if I'm told every problem what they are, it makes life a little bit easier. All right, so for this one, x is 4 and z is 2. So I just replace 2 times 4. So it's going to be 4 plus 8. 4 plus 8 is 12. <coughs> Here I have k is 4. k is the first one. So I have 4 minus h over 6. h is 12. So 12 over 6. All right, let's do order of operations here. 12 over 6 is 2, 4 minus 2, oh, sorry, you couldn't see any of that. So just to go over it real quick, uh, the first number is 4 instead of k, minus h over, over 6, h is 12, uh, 12 divided by 6 is 2, okay, now 4 minus 2 gives me 2. All right, these last two problems, I'll go ahead and work them out with you, they are a little bit more complicated. But once we get this thing down, everything kind of just flows pretty easily. So my first number is P. P is 6. Okay. Parentheses M plus Q, 4 plus 2, divided by 6. You can kind of choose whether or not you want to distribute that or not. I would rather not. <coughs> What I'm going to get here is I'm going to get 6 times 4 plus 2 is 6 over 6. There's a lot of 6's going on here. Uh, 6 times 6 is 36 divided by 6. 36 divided by 6 is 6. And that's my answer. Tough one, but came down to a pretty easy answer. 5 minus C is 2. And then 2 minus 2 plus 3. And that part is all over 6. Those dang 6s just won't go away. All right, so I have 5 minus. Let's work inside the parentheses first. 2 minus 2, that goes away. So now I have 2 times 3. 2 times 3 is 6 over 6. Well, 6 over 6 is just 1. So I have 5 minus 1. 5 minus 1 is 4. All right. Okay, I know you couldn't see that. Here's what it looks like worked out. I apologize for that. But what we have, the, the 2's canceled out because we had 2 minus 2. We had the plus 3 there. Okay, when we simplified this part, okay, this just became 3. So we had 2 times 3. 2 times 3 is this 6 here. 6 divided by 6 is 1. And now we finally got to use that 5 that we had out in front. 
5 minus 1 is 4. Again, summarize the notes. Go ahead and practice. Apply your knowledge and get all that stuff checked. Good luck on the Mastery Challenge. We'll see you tomorrow. And the countdown continues. We saw the reverse pass, the wrong ball play. Next we have Boise State, Statue of Liberty. Enjoy. With some type of run pass option going to the right. Boise State for the win. They hand it off to Johnson. Boise State has won the Tostitos Fiesta Bowl.